while we were playing those clips, you were you were raising your hands in the air. You well, were because laughing. Because I'm laughing. I mean, it, it, Mary Ryan, I sound, I sound like I'm on steroids or amphetamines <laughs> or something like that. Then we go to the ship of the Vidians, and then it's red. It's this transformation into a sort of man. How right? does it feel to hear all those roles played back to you? <laughs> it feels delightful. It's amusing, isn't it? Oh, it certainly is. Yes. But, I, but I, then again, I wasn't in the films. I wasn't in the shows. Too bad. Imagine. Too bad. Ah, you, were, you were missed. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> I've often felt that I was born to play in Ryan's Hope. I always felt that way. Really? Yes, of course. You weren't born at that time. How old are you? I'm, I'm 28 today. Yes, you're barely 28. I am. I'm, I'm hardly 28. You. You're younger than my son. Uh, well, well, we, we won't get into that. We will won't. We? we won't. I, I do want to talk about your new memoir. It's called Born with Teeth. Did you read it? I certainly did. You did? I did. Put your hand up. I did. Hand to God. I swear to God, right. I did. And I really enjoyed it. You were, I, I, But I wanted to talk about why you wrote this book. And you replied, it was because I want to be known. Right. And as someone in the public eye... I want to know what being known means to you. Well, when you play other characters for 40 years as an actress, <clears throat> I wouldn't say you hide behind them. But it's a, it's a commodious cloak to wear, isn't it? And it shields the actor from a great many things. And as I approached 60, having led a very complex, rich, uh, challenging often difficult life, I wanted to be known for who I am. It's, um, I suppose it's existential, you can call it whatever you like, but it certainly is a moment of recognition. I wouldn't say that it was epiphanic. I, I mean, I, I, I just, it dawned on me that it was time. And I wanted to leave something. It's an important feeling. I wanted to leave, not a mark, but uh, perhaps a legacy, but the knowledge of who I truly was. And the vulnerable person who is deeply me. And that's interesting because you don't spend too much time in this in this book, in this memoir, speaking about the intricacies of the roles that you play, you know, the set on Ryan's Hope or Star Trek Voyager. Uh, it focuses more on your personal life than it does your career. I'm interested, how much of writing this book was more about getting to know yourself? Well, that comes with it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. First of all, let me qualify this by saying I simply adored the process of writing. This was the most unexpected thing of all. Because you go to, away to the beach, right? And you sit down in front of your computer and you think, this is uh, a brand new process for me. I'm terrified. Uh, I'm going to have to now make a contract with myself, and I did, that I would not write it if I could not write it honestly. And I would not write it if I could not write it with some lyricism. So I approached it as I do acting, as I do roles, with the same discipline and the same order and the same intention. But what unfolded was something blissful. And I found out uh, that it just, it, it completely freed me um, in ways that I, I could not have ever expected. And only now are the reverberations becoming clear. But this is certainly not the mundanity of your personal life. I mean, this is really about extremely personal events that have happened to you in your life that some people would not feel free in sharing. For instance, you describe a violent sexual assault you experienced in New York City. How did you decide what details you wanted people to know about you? Was there anything that was off limits? No. No. Uh, uh, perhaps uh, I, I protected my daughter and her adoptive parents to a certain extent which I wanted very much to do, and that's uh, absolutely her right. Um, every chapter uh, contains an incident that shaped or defined me, uh, starting at four years of age, where I believed that I murdered my little sister. From the ice cold water, right? yes. And, of course, the rape is in there because that did shape me. It, it made me understand very clearly what a survivor I am because that did not embitter me, that that. Uh, that assault. Uh, in fact, I, I learned that it was highly impersonal. And what you have to deal with is simply going forward and leaning into it. Um, the baby, on the other hand, is something that really shaped me over time. And you also said that, um, and I, I, I can attest to this being from Newfoundland, being from an Irish Catholic background. You're I'm, from Newfoundland. I am from Newfoundland, That's yeah. the face on you, man. Like this. <laughs> it's hard to, yeah. Right. It's hard not to tell, isn't it? Yeah, you kind of yeah. give it away. Um, you, would you say, I'm Irish. We are private people. We keep it close to the vest. We keep it quiet. And believe you me, I know all about that. Mm -hmm. What sort of challenges did you have to overcome from that personal privacy, that family privacy? Well, I had to be sure that my parents were dead. Oh. <laughs> okay. Because you don't think I, you could have written this when they were no, alive? absolutely Why not. Why is that? 
Well, because I'm honest about my parents and I'm honest about what they did uh, to each other, what they did to me, the effect they had on me and my siblings and my family and my life. Uh, um, There is a, you know, it's an Irish thing, not a stoicism, but a kind of pride that I would call almost false. It is so uh, rigorous. It is, you know, the Irish wear this with great pride, don't we, that we keep it to ourselves and we don't... I'm not so sure that that's the best way. When you have led a life as I have led, perhaps my journey should be shared. Is a journey that was intended to be shared. So I'm 60 now, and uh, I'm free of those ropes, uh, which could have hung me, but didn't. And I think they're just, uh, now I need to just reach out. It's a, quite a feeling of, of wanting to do that. It's, it's such a, a joy to talk to you. A through line in this book involves another very painful, extremely personal moment in your life. Yeah. You were in your early 20s. Yeah. You had a baby early on in your career. You had a daughter, and mm. you decided to give her up for adoption. Why was that story for you? Why was that important for you to share uh, to the public at large? Because I think a lot of women, a lot of women get pregnant. And for all of them, it's a terrible moment of reckoning. This is, you know, we're talking about life. We're talking about uh, having to make a decision. And uh, it was very clear to me what my decision was going to be. I had hoped against hope that my mother would help me. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was making a little money, and I thought perhaps if she could help me in the beginning months or years, I would provide for a nanny and blah, blah, blah. But she couldn't. My sister Tess had just died, and she said, no, that's not going to do. That would be untenable and completely unacceptable from your father's point of view. So you need to march over to the Catholic Charities and uh, find yourself a good social worker and do the brave thing, do the right thing. Uh, Go deep on this one, kitten, and step up to the plate because you've made a mistake. And now you have to do the right thing. So I followed my mother's counsel, as I had always done, almost by rote, because I don't think it was my nature, you know. And I did give the baby up for adoption and instantly regretted it and spent the next 21 years trying to find her. And and even one of the most impactful moments in this book is you didn't even get to hold your baby when she was born. But you do write, and I can't imagine this, about having to do a scene a few days later on your soap opera, on Ryan's Hope. Your character was a new mother bringing her baby home from the hospital for the first time. And you had just given your baby up for adoption. What was the scene like that day holding that baby in your arms? That was harder than the actual birth itself, arguably even harder than the renunciation. And that's why I call that chapter Ransom. There's a price. Oh, baby, there's a price Uh, that you just, you you don't know if you can. The cost is so high, pay it. So when I went to work that day, it was three days after the birth of the baby, Claire Levine, my great friend, who saved me, she wrote it into the story. I was allowed to come to term on Ryan's Hope. Six million people watched it. But she, which was her due, had written this monologue for Mary Ryan, who, of course, keeps her beautiful baby girl. And uh, the stunt nurse approached me, the studio nurse with the stunt infant. Was this a real infant? It was A, a real, real infant. infant. Yeah. And I remember just putting my hand up and saying, a block of ice and saying, just stop. You wait right there until that cue light goes off. And when that cue light goes off, you hand me the, the baby. And not one second before. Right. She did. She, I took the baby. I walked in. And it was a monologue about love, fidelity, endurance, forever, through life, past death, and into the hands of God. Done. Flawless. First take, right? Control room is dark. It never was dark. The light always went on, dark in shadow. I just looked up and I said, acceptable? Yeah. I said, take this, baby. And I walked out and I realized then that something had had been soldered in that moment, the steel of the spine. Kate, I want to I want to go to the idea of back to the idea of being known because it's it takes a certain amount of bravery to write such a confessional uh, autobiography and to open yourself up to people knowing more than you just as your characters and your characters are such well known characters. If you look at Catherine mm-hmm. Janeway, the first female captain in the history of the Star they're Trek, they're iconic, franchise. actually. Yeah, of okay. course, Gillian uh, Resnikov on the uh, Orange is the New Black, a whole new team of fans there. These people are fervent about fandom of your characters. What is it like to contend with fans? 
that believe they know you know you based on knowing these larger-than-life characters? Well, I've had that for 40 years. What's that like? It's great. Yeah? I mean, I'm not one of those actors who thinks I'm above that. The whole thing is the relationship with the audience and the fans, and they've always been incredibly respectful of me. I've had nothing but support. And so I give it back. I want the dialogue, and I want the relationship with them. For for me, it's not fandom. What they're doing is appreciating what I'm giving them. Mm -hmm. But it's a two-way street. Absolutely a two-way street. The dynamic has to be alive, and it is. I mean, David Letterman said something about that. He said that um, being famous is like living in a small town. Everyone knows who you are. Everyone comes up, and everyone's generally nice. And then you're able to be nice back to them. Yeah. Being famous is kind of an... Also, it's our responsibility, isn't it? You think so? I chose this craft. I chose this profession. I'm public domain. I'm, so you can't then, <laughs> you know, turn up your nose. You have to... You have to be gracious. But these characters have done so much for your personal life. Um, you write in the for memoir. For my personal life? No, yeah. When, when you write, when Mulgrew suffered, when you personally suffered, Janeway, your character, picked you up. What role, playing these characters, helped you in getting to know more about yourself? What role? Yeah. When, what did you mean by that when you said, when Mulgrew suffered, my character picked me up? Well, what I mean is the work always lifted me up. Is that so? When I was exhausted on Voyager and I'd been putting in 75-hour a week, right, and I had two kids at home I was raising, I'd come, a Friday night would come, and I knew that I'd have 10 hours ahead of me into the dawn, Saturday. And uh, Mulgrew was then very, was exhausted, could be a little petulant, could be a little tough. And Janeway would just say, no, you got to pull yourself together and be the professional that you are and give this character and this scene everything that you have to give it. And that's how I did it. That's how I not only survived it, that's how I surmounted, I think, all the other difficulties. I, I don't want to give away the end of the book, which is, which is fascinating. And, but it's missing a few of the chapters of your life, including the latest one. Why not write about your life up until this point? Why end the book when you did? It was just an organic thing. Yeah? It was like music. That was the end note. It was a grace note. And I thought it was right. I, I mean, you, there may be more to come about what's happened since then. But that, that was the right time and the right way to end this particular book. So many autobiographies hope to inspire future generations of either actors or maybe just people. Uh, one thing that I, I, I loved about the book is that you were able to take your own kind of message from it, your own kind of lessons from the book. I'm wondering what, what, what was it that you wanted people to take away after closing the novel, or closing the book, I should say? That we all carry, uh, I think we all carry our suffering uh, too, too much inside. I think so. Yeah, I do. I think um, it's such a brief moment, life. Really brief. Mm -hmm. You're 28 and you think you've got a long time, but I can tell you, honey, it's over fast. I think the one thing we have to do is stand up to one another and say, this is how I've suffered and this is how I've loved. This is who I've become and this is why. Because maybe holding that hand out is going to help a little bit. It's, it, it could possibly elucidate something. It could reveal something. And certainly it was helpful to me. Uh, I think it's terribly important to release shame, guilt, any kind of regret, and admit that life is a complex bag and a crooked path at best, and we have to walk it together. Kate, I can't thank you enough for coming here today. It's been a joy speaking with My you. My joy. And You're I'm, great. I thank you so much. And I had it, I have to say, I'm happy I read the whole book, especially now. I <laughs> <laughs> Award-winning actor Kate Mulgrew, her memoir is titled Born With Teeth. 